The first Battle of Edair involved the British and French assault on German forces stationed in the village of Edair during the Commune campaign of the First World War. Allied forces from Douala launched their advance on 20 October. Following stiff resistance along the southern railway line between Douala and Edair, German forces withdrew from the town to Jorned, allowing Allied troops to finally occupy Edair on 26 October 1914. Chapter 1 – Background After British and French forces had landed in and occupied the major port city of Douala in September 1914, the German garrison that had once protected it retreated inland. One group withdrew along the northern rail line to Chang, while another travelled up the Wuri River to Jarbasi. The largest group which included Commune's governor, Karl Ebermeyer and commandant, Major Zimmermann, had moved southeast along the southern railway line to the village of Edair. During their retreat, German forces damaged or destroyed much of the railway. General Dobell, the British commander at Dwala feared that the German forces that had retreated could pose a threat to his new acquisitions, prompting attacks on Jarbasi and Edair in October 1914. After the German defeat at the Battle of Jarbasi in early October, river vessels and manpower became available for an assault on Edair which lay on the Sarnaga River to the southeast of Jorned. Chapter 1 Section 1 – French Assault on the Yapoma Bridge During the retreat to Edair, German forces damaged the railway bridge at Yapoma, just outside Douala. A small German detachment remained entrenched on the far side of the Dibamba River at the damaged bridge while the majority of the force had retreated to Edea. The German control of the bridge was seen as a great danger to the Allied occupation of Douala due to Japoma's close proximity to the town. On 6 October, a French force of 400 derailers under Colonel Meyer assisted by British naval bombardment made an assault on this position. The French troops crossed the bridge under severe fire from the entrenched German force who withdrew. Securing the partially damaged railway bridge made a push to Edea, further to the southeast, possible. Chapter 2 – Assault on Edea With Yapoma and Jarbasi secured, Dobell initiated the assault on Edea. On 20 October he launched an expedition up the Njong River to the village of Dihan which lay to the south of Edea. A track through the jungle connected the two settlements. The British force that had sailed up the Njong arrived in Dihan on 21 October and began to march north to Edea. A second British column under Commander L. W. Braithwaite would move up the Sarnaga River. Colonel Meyer's French force would advance eastward along the railway line from Yapoma. One French and two British officers were killed among others when their boat capsized on the Njong River early in the operations. The Sarnaga River flotilla had great difficulty navigating because of the many natural obstacles such as sand bars that lay below the surface. The columns moving north from Dihan, and up the Sarnaga did not experience significant resistance from German forces but did face disease. Zimmermann chose to focus the defense of Edair on the southern railway line. The French column under Meyer that had moved east along the railway line from Yapoma encountered heavy resistance throughout their advance and suffered severe casualties as a result. Realizing that the Japoma column continued to advance despite their resistance and that other columns were closing in from Dihana and the Sarnaga, German forces including the governor and commandant withdrew to Jorned, approximately 100 miles to the east. On 26 October British and French forces entered and occupied Edair, finding the Germans fled. Chapter 3 – Aftermath After the capture of Edair, Allied troops moved, 20 miles further inland to Kopongo. A German attempt to recapture Edair would fail at the Second Battle of Edair in early January 1915. Following the success at Jarbasi and now Edair, the only remaining German unit that had withdrawn from Douala in September was the one which moved north towards the fort at Chang. In December 1914 a British force under Colonel Edmund H. Georges would begin its march toward Chang. On 2 January 1915 Georges' force reached Chang and began a bombardment of the German fort there, which forced the garrison's surrender. 
The British force destroyed the fort before withdrawing to more secure lines of communication at the railhead at Bear.